It's showtime. Okay! Tokyo! South America! Australia! France! Germany! UK! Africa! Here we go! Head on with Bob Kincaid. Three hours of conversation, cussing and a discussing with America's only born and bred Southern liberal talk host. Head on with Bob Kincaid is brought to you each night by Coal River Mountain Watch. Coal River Mountain Watch invites you to become part of the solution, part of a sustainable future, part of the uprising against mountaintop removal. Coal River Mountain Watch, CRMW.net. And now, from high in the hills of beautiful West Bicod, Virginia, here's Bob Kincaid on the Head On Radio Network. Well, howdy! And we are off and running on this, the seventh day of January 2020. I haven't said 2019, have I, during any of this New Year's programs? It, I hope not. Uh, it is. It's the seventh day of January 2020. This is the Horn. Head on dot live is where you find us on the interweb tubes. That's where you go, for instance, if you'd like to be part of the merry, wacky, zany, real time multimedia extravaganza. That is the Horn Chat Room during the three hours in which this program is live, Monday through Friday, from 5 to ordinarily 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 to 5 Pacific Standard Time, and all times in between. Um, we're a two-hour program this week, and remember, program no, no programs at all next week because next week's the big production week for the, uh, for the little theater piece that uh, I'm participating in down here, uh, broadcasting live from the last last wandering foothills of the Appalachians here in the northwest corner of Alabama. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Bob. Did I do that yet? Yeah. Th- yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's Titanic Tuesday on, uh, on the horn. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That day for celebrating manifestations of Titanic right-wing intellect. And uh, I, I think we've got, uh, we've got some impressive nominees for the evening. Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, thank you very kindly, Brother Deacon Asa, um, letting me know that, uh, it, well, I'll tell you exactly what he said. Hot on both streams atop the USS Trump Tannic deck. Hey, Pompey, let's start World War Three. Hey, Pompey, let's start World War Three to own the libs. <laughs> That's entirely too realistic. And, of course, greetings going out to uh, all of our pals over uh, watching the video on Facebook. Hi, y'all. And, you know, I'm still prepared. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, Bob. Tune in's airing your Greta Thunberg clip. Hmm. How about that? Well, it should be it should be airing this live program. I'm... <laughs> I don't know. No rhyme, no reason. Uh, but uh, among other things, uh, like I said, if you'd like to pop into the chat room, wander by. Uh, early arrivers, Anatole and Squeaky are waiting for you, capably moderated by longtime inveterate, indefatigable veteran chat room moderator Sparky, who, being a, a, a third stage guild navigator, has folded space to become man cave. And everybody's, everybody's just waiting. Waiting for you. And, of course, every program here at the Horn begins with gratitude, this program being no different. Thanks going out today to our subscribers for the seventh day of the month. That would be thank you to Brock and thank you to Dr. Allen down in Texas and thank you, Reed, and thank you, James. Thank you very kindly. And then last night after the program closed, um, we got some help. Thank you very kindly to our friend of longstanding, Jack in Shreveport. Thank you to Anatole as well. And so here's the good news. That means that uh, fundraising goal today is only 330 bucks. 10 at 33, 33 at 10, what have you. The, uh, you know, the contribute interface is over at head-on.live. Uh, I don't know, maybe tune in settling down um, 
Squeaky says, tune in, had Bob live here. So, Hey, Suma, happy birthday. Suma tuning in all the way from, uh, well, from uh, Australia. Say hi to John for me. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's one. You know, still, it's the magic. The magic of, uh, of an Internet-connected world. Conversations in Australia and across the pond. And well, It's not like Australia is not across the pond. It's up over, down under. Yeah. But anyway, it is, um, it is Titanic Tuesday, Trump-tanic Tuesday, full speed, uh, flank speed toward the iceberg. And one of our, one of our favorite Titanic Morans uh, made an appearance today. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about uh, Nikki Haley, Nimrata Haley. Nikki's not her name. Um, it, former governor of the state of South Carolina and former ambassador to the United Nations. You might recall that Nikki Haley, who is hailed as a rising star in the Republican Party, well, Nikki uh, once took a call from the Moscow 97.5 Morning Zoo crew who convinced her she was talking to President of Poland and wanted to know her, her feelings as UN ambassador about, uh, uh, about conflict with tiny island nation of Binomo. I think we were the only broadcast outlet that ran the entirety, and it went on forever. She never wised up. She never caught on to the gag. She never had a clue. She's an idiot. And so she agreed with him. Well, you know what? I really do. I am. I, I, I promise you, Mr. President of Poland, I will look right into that there Bonomo problem because we don't want any problems with Bonomo, Mo, no, Mo. Honestly. But, but that's her. And somehow or another, the multimillionaires of the for-profit media missed out on the fact that this woman probably doesn't have sense enough to pour piss out of a boot with directions on the heel. And so she continues to be brought on TV shows, and not the least of which, of course, being uh, um, Fox News TV Radio Rwanda. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, pretty sad and silly um, because she's, well, I don't know, in a, in, in a political party that has given us mm, Caribou Barbie, you know, Mussolini, Godzilla from Wasilla, Sarah Palin. And uh, a noted hog D baller, Joni Ernst, and most recently, um, Trump lick spittle, Elise Stefanik. Um, maybe, 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 maybe she is. One of the smart ones. I mean, it, it wasn't just the Bonomo thing. Uh, it, you might you, you might recall that she also declared that uh, uh, that, that, that flying that treasonous rag from that little dust up back in 1861 uh, was a sign of service and sacrifice and heritage. Yeah. Well, so that all serves as, I guess, what we would call prelude to her latest, uh, her, her latest genius announcement. Even as people in Iran were showing up in their millions to mourn the assassination of General Qasem Soleimani, because as noted in yesterday's program, now we're back in the assassination business. 
I, I don't know if we ever actually got out of the assassination business, but legally we're we're supposed to be out of the assassination business. Back off the Facebook audio a little bit. Looked like we were getting a little crispy. Um, million and, and and there was a stampede. Fifty people died in Iran um, because of the the throngs that have turned out to to mourn uh, the man we assassinated. This this truly was an act in haste and repent in leisure sort of moment. Hey, it's John Fox in the in the Facebook chat. Hey, John. Um, and Bev from back home. Um, it, it, it's stunning the degree of stupid that would be required to do something like this. But then again, we have a stunningly stupid person occupying the people's house there at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We just do. And so as, as, as people were taking to the streets to mourn the assassination of Qasim uh, Soleimani, well, there was, there was Nikki Nimrata Haley over, of course, on Fox News TV, Radio Rwanda, uh, declaring her outrage, I tell you, outrage. She was just disgusted. Um, she showed up on the on the TV program run by that life support system for a haircut, at, you know, Sean Hannity job, where she declared in 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 true wave the bloody shirt fashion, the only ones mourning. Uh, the loss of Soleimani or our Democrat leadership and our Democrat presidential candidates. This, of course, marks Nikki Haley out as a 200 proof bald face liar because no one, no one's out there doing that. No one's mourning him in the United States. We're noting that it was probably not the most intelligent thing in the world to do. Maybe one of the least intelligent things in the world to do. For we turned him into a martyr. And, and you got to figure that Nitwit Nero there in the White House is, uh, is, is, is having trouble controlling his sphincter right now because, again, he's got a price on his head. No kidding. Uh, the uh, uh, the folks over in Iran are trying to raise eighty million dollars to put a bounty on 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 the Orange Man baby. But no, Nimrata Haley thinks we're mourning him. It ain't mourning. Well, if anybody's mourning anything, let's put it this way. We are mourning the death of sanity and real foreign policy in this country. Mourning the death of Soleimani. Honest to Pete, my left hind foot. And so we're getting closer and closer and closer to... Uh, Something approximately appro approximating the potential for doomsday. Oh, and uh, uh, by the way, if you were getting that weird rec that that recorded program on TuneIn, uh, if you'll just refresh it or shut down the shut down the app and start it back up, you'll get the live program. It's rolling now. So that's that's just a starting place. This manifest ignorance, stupidity of Nikki Haley. Uh, Steve, Steve in New York says, I'm mourning the total death of any chance of peace in the Middle East on any kind of 
visible horizon. Yeah, it's... What are the chances? Uh, Slim and Slim just rode out of town for Texas. That's what the it, that's what the chances are. But I don't I don't know if we ever. It's been a long time since we really wanted peace in the Middle East, hasn't it? Say what you will about Bill Clinton, they tried. You might recall because it, I, I think perspective and context are really important in in this. You might recall that uh, the dim leader back in the aughts, dim leader went to Israel and said, hey, God told me to strike Saddam, and I did. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? When he, when he, when he said that uh, our slaughter of the innocent people of Iraq was something that the most powerful almighty force in the universe told him to do of course this was also the same president who told us that man and fish could live together in peace yeah yeah i know i know and it gets creepier and creepier and creepier out in iowa Joni ernst is up for re-election, and she's really no. It's really no fun to mock, mock her because I don't get to, get to do my silly Southern accent, and I'm I'm not really good at it. Somebody's going to have to t teach me to. Maybe I'll get Carol Baker to teach me a proper Iowegian accent. But regardless regardless of the theatrics of it, um, <laughs> she uh. Uh, she has said she uh, she has no interest whatsoever in hearing any new impeachment evidence that John Bolton might have to offer. And little Marco Rubio jumped in and said, and me neither, me neither. I don't want to hear anything. La, 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 la. I can't hear it, I can't hear it, I can't hear it. Uh, note coming in from... Uh, our dear friend Lady B, who always brings her A game to an email. I just saw a clip from a press conference the White House held earlier. The media is asking the, asking the Trump administration the wrong questions. If the president says, many countries are thanking me for killing Soleimani, someone else should ask him to name those countries. Someone should ask him, does he understand the political ramifications of what he just did, how he single-handedly destabilized the Middle East, and how he's sending Americans to die, some of whom voted for him, over some bullshit that he started? And I'll note editorially in the middle of Lady B's note, um, Iran announced that it was completely done with anything having to do with, uh, with the treaty that they signed uh, with uh, the, you know, the multilateral denuclearization treaty of course we violated that first on orders from you know chlamydia claudius so that's out the window and that means that the nuclear the nuclear genie is uh, warming up again and in a way anticipating me uh, me me leading um with Nikki Haley, uh, Lady B says, the rationale that killing Soleimani was good because he was a bad guy is a weak and insufficient excuse for setting off another war. You may or may not like the ugly wooden beam in the middle of your basement. It obstructs the view of the 70-inch TV in the man cave, but you don't remove it because it's helping hold something up. Soleimani had a purpose, otherwise he would be, and now is, just another dead terrorist. But over a million people showed up to see his casket. Seventy-plus people were trampled to death at the procession. Some of those poor folks have, may have hated his guts and just felt obliged to be there, but the one thing they all have in common is that they know that America, the biggest bully on the block, has a psychopath in power and a citizenry that is seemingly enabling him. As long as he's in office, their lives are in danger. They got nothing to lose. Dude, they got nothing to lose. Freedom's just another word. 
for nothing left to lose. Yeah, there they were just a couple of weeks ago protesting in the streets against their own corrupt government, and it is. It's corrupt. All theocracies are always corrupt. It, that, that you, could, you could make a law of physics out of that, a law of, of nature. You could, you could put it up there with, with, with Newton's laws. All theocracies are always corrupt because they're led by religious maniacs who don't care what the rules are, who don't care anything about law, who care only about personal aggrandizement and control of a culture that, so that you know they wind up better off than they did. Right, see? <sighs> Lady B continues and says, I got two nephews-in-law. Cert, uh, currently on active duty. One's an airplane mechanic and has been in Afghanistan for six weeks. Although he isn't on the front lines, he's still in fucking Afghanistan. Right now they're under a communications blackout. His last call to his mom was on Friday. Every time I see the word Afghanistan, I think, huh, Alexander the Great couldn't, couldn't conquer Afghanistan. And he was Alexander the Great. How many Alexander the Greats have we produced militarily? I mean, we've produced some good generals, but we don't have any of them now. Oh, no, not by a long shot. But, yeah, a dim leader said, yeah, yeah we, and, and, oh, do you, and you remember when Rumfield got all angry and said, no, yeah, there's nothing worth bombing over there. Afghanistan. My other nephew, Lady B, says, works on electrical grids and just got back from Turkey. He's stationed at Fort Bragg. My niece says he's not supposed to go because the U.S. Army has spent a lot of money to train him, so he's not likely to become cannon fodder anytime soon. But you never know, huh? He's got three babies, Lily, Jeremiah, and Willow, all under the age of six. He's a great dad. My other nephew in Afghanistan has a one-year-old son. His name's Bentley, and he loves toy trucks. Little, 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 little babies and toy trucks, and that always makes me think of that great drive-by truckers song, uh, "Bulldozers and Dirt." Bentley's grandma and grandpa right now are feeling fragile as fuck. My nephews are not stupid men; they're not to be mocked because they didn't get a degree in software engineering or because they didn't become doctors or lawyers. They're human beings, sons, brothers, lovers, and fathers. They do what they do because they can. They are good at it. Besides, you can't tell a twenty-something-year-old man nothing especially when he's got little mouths to feed. Who are we to sit here pontificating about how we didn't vote for this? We are here. We didn't step up fully to the plate, Democrat or Republican. We as a country let this happen. We could lose more sons and daughters because we simply don't understand how our government and democracy works. I'm not a mother, never purposely tried, and now I can't anyway. But I'm a woman, Lady B says. I nurture, ache, and worry. When I saw this line in this poem, everything in me lurched in anguish. From Louise Glick, End of Winter. You wanted to be born, I let you be born. When has my grief ever gotten in the way of your pleasure? Closing, Lady B says, No young person should have to die before their elders especially over some bullshit like this. And God it is. Uh, Flavio shared with me some information on the bounty in Iran. About that bounty, according to Snopes, Snopes tends to err on the right-wing side of things, um, what's true, a eulogist heard on Iranian state TV during the funeral procession of Qasem Soleimani called for an $80 million bounty on President Trump's head based on the 80 million uh, human being population of Iran. What's undetermined, according to Snopes, the call for a bounty on Trump is not, net, not yet known to have been authorized by or represent the official position of Iranian authorities. Of course not. The Iranian authorities will maintain the high ground on this, as bizarre as that may seem. But when Donald Trump is your president, 
a syphilitic plague infested rat can occupy the high ground. Because with Trump, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing but low ground. It's swampy. It's marshy. It's mosquito infested and laden with various insect larvae. Well, there went dinner in the uh, Eastern time zone. Fortunately, since this is only a two-hour program this week, we probably won't have a chance to hurt the dinner hour in uh, uh, in the Pacific time zone, but I think I just did a number on it uh, here in the Eastern time zone. I'm not even hungry anymore, and I was starving before the program started. Try not to eat before the program because it makes me a little slow and sluggish. Yeah. Mm. We're in some shit, aren't we? And we and, and, and you know how I know? Because the maggots are, are 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 behaving particularly maggoty. Take for instance Kevin McCarthy, the wild eyed maggot who leads the minority in the House of Representatives. And uh, you know whose fault it is? No, no, really. You know whose fault it is that that uh, Tangerine Tiberius decided to get our country back in the uh, assassination business? No, whose bit? Yeah. Well, why don't I just? Uh, well, let's go over to the let, let's let's go over to the couch of stupid that's occupied in the mornings at Fox News TV Radio Rwanda and find out, according to House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, whose fault it is that the Nereal Vespasian ordered the assassination of Qasem Soleimani. Who, who, who could pop? I mean, I, I know. I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ah, Hillary. Or... Obama? Because they've kind of been doing that. <sighs> no, not this time. Uh, Kevin McCarthy went for the deep dive because he knew that since Fox broadcast to an audience of one, that this would really, really uh, uh, tickle Marcus Horalius pink. Or, like, orange or something, right? So, get the hockey puck out. They already know who it is in the chat room. Let's go to another topic that's been in the news uh, in the last couple of days, of course. The decisive killing of a terrorist leader in Soleimani uh, in Iraq. Decisive? Troops has been for quite some time. Yet the Democrats quickly jumped to politics, accusing the president of either not having the information that he said he did or overstepping his bounds as commander in chief. in the or violating the law. Now, Democrats in the House, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, are, are, are pushing to bring a resolution forward to limit the president's power. Here's what Adam Schiff tweeted. He said, a dangerous and provocative decision to target a top Iranian official for killing, threats to bomb cultural sites and use disproportionate force. These are the acts of a president with no functional national security process. Congress must engage with hearings and constraints. So okay, Adam that's... Schiff says hearings. more hearings uh, on, on the commander in chief's prerogative. You know what? He's the chairman of the Intel Committee. Maybe had he spent the last year working on that, trying to protect us from what was happening in Iran, from the bombing of the takers, Saudi Arabia taking down our drone. Instead of taking that committee and making an impeachment, he would <laughs> really? never make that comment. Today, in yeah, yeah, Kevin McCarthy, because he knew that it would, it would play well with Julius Geezer, blamed Adam Schiff for making, forcing, forcing the said Julius Geezer to assassinate an Iranian general. And, and once again, what's scary out of that is not that Kevin McCarthy is so 
uh, uh, trans- transparently stupid as to say that, but the fact that millions and millions of Emery's and Marvelines are sitting down there in their single wides, uh, in their matching barca loungers, watching Fox News TV, Radio Rwanda, and nodding at each other like little bobbleheads across the room. I, 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 Adam Schiff, I can't believe it, Marvelaine. I, I, don't, I don't know why he made Trump, uh, uh, Trump, Trump assassinate that feller. Jesus. And John Fox reminds me over in the Facebook uh, in the Facebook video, uh, Yo Bob from a land on fire. No kidding. You've got nitwit Nero. We have the Pentecostal bedwetter. Goes on holiday as the nation burns. Oh, right. okay. See, I've learned something new this this evening, and that means that the day has been worthwhile. I did not realize that the Prime Minister of Australia was a uh, religious maniac. But, of course, why wouldn't it surprise me? Or why would it? Because that apocalyptic shit appeals to them. They can't help it. They're drawn to it uh, like, a, like a moth to flame. Ah, what's that? Australia's on fire? Huh, good thing I'm not in Australia. I'm in Hawaii. And again, maybe that means Jesus, when Jesus comes back, He'll come to Australia. We'll put some shrimp on the babby for him. Even that's not kosher. I don't think he's worried about that anymore, do you? A visit from old cousin Crocodile Kincaid. This is turning out to be a whale of a Trump Tannic Tuesday. And just because, it just just solely for the entertainment value of it, yeah, we haven't we haven't had a uh, dispatch from the View in a while, and I think it, it's it's always fun. It's always fun to watch uh, uh, Megan McCain, our little nut Meg get taken to school. And so it was today when Elizabeth Warren showed up to talk a little talk a little Suleimani and other stuff with the the panel there. And naturally at the far end of the table the most ignorant bleached blonde woman in America, our little nutmeg. Let's check in on the action in Medias Race, shall we? the work against ISIS with our allies, and we have a president of the United States who is tweeting threats of war crimes. So there's the immediate effect. What was, tell them what that was. Yeah, oh my crime, gosh. The cultural institutions. So yeah. he is yeah. he is threatening yeah. to bomb cultural institutions. It's just a violation of yeah. international law, and it would be a war crime mm-hmm. if the United States did that. And you know, his own Secretary of Defense has stepped in. So, uh, actually, we're not going to do that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're we're not going to do that. But here's the thing: he has moved us close to the edge of war. He's put our country on the edge of going to war. We know that the Iranians are going to respond. He's been in this. Now stop that. See, this is what happens when you're working with a laptop. Uh, I I, I deeply respect Senator Warren. She is... um, she, she's to be praised for her command of facts and details. But there's one place here, there's one aspect of what she was saying uh, in which I disagree with her. 
She said Trump has taken us to the edge of war or the brink of war. I disagree. I think that now, now within, the, within the framework provided by the Constitution, there's only one branch of government that has the power to start a war, and that's the Congress. But Congress sort of abdicated its right to do that a long time ago. Korea, Vietnam. My God, can you imagine a congressional declaration of war against Grenada? Panama? So now we just let the, 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 the president go on some military adventures from time to time and then ask him to pretty please come and report back to the Congress and then the Congress will say, well, okay, I mean, we're not going to declare war or anything, but we're going, we're going to let you go ahead and, 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 and slaughter some poor people. Because you know that's mostly who takes it on the chin. In 2003, when we committed uh, uh, the, 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 the atrocity of our war against the innocent people of Iraq, those granddaddies carrying the broken bodies of their little three-year-old granddaughters out of the smoking rubble of some mud-brick village in Iraq weren't millionaires. Those were just ordinary people trying to get by. Like most of the folks on this planet. They weren't wealthy. And I don't recall any photographs of grieving bankers or grieving billionaires out of the Iraq war to you. And I think if it's, it's, it's highly unlikely that if this thing heats up the way I halfway expect it to, unless it turns out that the Iranians are the ones with the cool head, in which case aren't we just screwed anyway. Um, I mean, when, 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 the, when the Ayatollahs and the mullahs, when 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 those are when those are the guys who are keeping their shit together, and the president of the United States is running around naked inside the White House playing with himself, when 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 that situation obtains, hmm, look for a soft place to land, sunshine. But no, that when the when 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 and if we decide to start bombing. Iran, the way that, uh, oh, say, our little nutmeg's daddy so longed to do. It'll be some flower seller on the corner who won't go home to his children. It'll be some lady working a push cart who won't dandle her grandkids on her knees ever again. Won't be any Ayatollahs. Won't be any Mullahs. And I don't know if you caught this or not, but today, uh, today, um, the comb over Caligula grudgingly agreed not to commit war crimes. Yeah, I wish I was kidding. Uh, he said that, uh, he said, I like to obey the law. God almighty. Um, he's 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 pissed because he was really looking forward to bombing him some mosques. And this is one other one of those don't take my word for it moments. We've got it coming out of his own filthy gob. Because of course. I mean this is this is sickening. We 
Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. Now, you're not, you're not supposed to bomb any cultural heritage sites. Uh, they figured that out in 1954 in The Hague, and the U.N. passed a resolution about it in 2017. And welcome to 2020. The year, not the TV show. Could you also clear up, Mr. President, whether Iranian cultural sites would be on any future targets? Well, as I said yesterday, it was very interesting. Uh, they're allowed to kill our people. They're allowed to maim our people. They're allowed to blow up everything that we have, and there's nothing that stops them. And we are, according to a very various laws. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a fuckwit. They're allowed to blow up everything we have. Everything? Really? Really, really dumbass? What have they blown up over here? And now I, I, real, I realize that um, uh, your regime uh, got caught trying to claim that somehow or another Qasem Soleimani had something to do with 9-11, but we all know that that was a ridiculous lie. No, I mean, nobody believed that. That's as, that's as silly as back when um, the, the dim leader's maladministration was trying to claim that Saddam did 9-11, and then when they got called on, they said, we never said it, and then, and then, and then they rolled the tape of them saying it. Now, I wonder to this day uh, if uh, Nitwit Nero realizes that it was his pals, the Saudis, who took down the Twin Towers. Of course, that was a great day for Donald Trump because he got on the phone and remember September 11, 2001? Jesus, it was 19, almost 19 years ago. Son of a gun, how about that? Uh, he, he, he immediately called a radio station and said, I just want to let you know that now that the Twin Towers are down, I have the tallest building in New York City. Yay me. Now, what, what's, what, what's that again? Let's, let's hear the whole clip. I'm sorry I interrupted. I, bad habit of mine. My bad. Iranian cultural sites would be on any future target. Well, as I said yesterday, it was very interesting. Uh, they're allowed to kill our people. They're allowed to maim our people. They're allowed to blow up everything that we have, and there's nothing that stops them. And we are, according to uh, various laws, uh, supposed to uh, be very careful with their cultural heritage. And you know what? If that's what the law is, I, w I like to obey the law. But think of it. They kill our like people. To. They blow up our people. And then we have to be very gentle with their cultural institutions. But I'm okay with it. It's okay with me. I will say this. If Iran does anything that they shouldn't be doing, they're going to be suffering the consequences, and very strongly. I See, he does this. Ban Dr. Bandy Lee gets a little more right every day, you see. Because she is at this point in time screaming from the rooftops that this man is, is, is deeply mentally ill and needs to be put on a 72-hour hold to find out just how mentally ill he is. Because you see... He can't tell the difference between soldiers in uniform being killed and a, a, a hellfire missiling a thousand-year-old mosque with mosque with worshippers inside. I mean, it really kind of pisses me off that that, that I'm the non-religious guy, the guy who is openly hostile to just about every form of religion, and I'm the one who's having to sit here and defend religious institutions against a guy who would love to send missiles against, against anything with a dome on it in Iran. Me! And the guy that and the guy and the guy that wants to blow up Iran is beloved of people who are in churches every time the damn things open. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Sunday school, prayer meeting Wednesday. <sighs> and then there's when the evangelist comes to town. You know, for revival. 
And they're right on board with all of this. I'm not going to get into it tonight because tomorrow's prayer meeting Wednesday and that's when we do this stuff. But they're right there. They're on board. And so the Muslim world can be forgiven if they get the notion, because, you know, every now and then white folks get this notion, white European folks, white European heritage folks get the notion that like, they'd like to go over uh, in, into the Middle East and, 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 and fuck over some people for how they believe in things. Me, I don't want anything to do with any God that says I can't have barbecued pulled pork and the occasional shrimp on the babby. It seems rather a silly and petty God to me. Or who says uh, I, I have to um, put on headgear or wear my left shoe on my right foot and my right foot on my left, my right shoe on my left foot and and, and, and walk backwards and take two steps backwards and one step forward and, 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 and yell holly smoot uh, on days that don't have R's in them. Yeah, no, I'll take a powder on all of that. And, and <sighs> yeah. By the way, this might be a good time for us to get in touch with our um, historical knowledge of about a thousand years ago. Get in touch with names like Abbot Suget and Bernard of Clairvaux and learn what taking the cross was about. One of the things I love about doing this play that I'm, I'm working on down here is that it gives me a chance to, immer you know, in, 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 the, in the course of trying to build a character, it gives me a chance to get in touch with that period of time. Because it was at, at my God, what a world it was. And they had all their iconography and everything. And, and, and see, these, these things happen for a reason. It wasn't, it, if, you, if you want to look at the Crusades for a moment, and let's just have a little historical digression here, if you don't mind. Oh, here we go with the trying to reconnect thing again. Do it a poor wireless connection? I, I'm hardwired, damn it. Um, A thousand years and more ago, roughly one seventh of the time that we have been sedentary and a sedentary agricultural society, culture, yeah, whatever. About a thousand years ago, there was a trade network that ran, and, and remember, nothing faster than a horse can run. There was a trade network that ran from Asia all the way into Europe, the Silk Road. And largely because the European Christians found it so damn difficult to get along with the, uh, with the, with the Muslims who controlled much of the area, um, the Asian trade got severely curtailed. And then the, 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 the rising and growing and spreading Muslim empires took over the so-called Holy Land, which previously had been uh, held largely by the Byzantines. Uh, I apologize. I'm going to have to restart the video. Don't know why, but we will be right back. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the Muslims took over 
their land. And this, in turn, upset the apple cart of Asian commerce. This then created some economic chaos in Europe. And meanwhile, Europe had a surfeit of knights, mercenaries. And so the Pope promised that anyone, any, any man who would take the cross, which was a, which was a, um, a euphemism, for going to war in the Middle East, camera's good, connection's good, and this is pissing me off. Um, once more unto the breach, dear friends. Anyway, when you agreed to take the cross, the church in turn agreed to um, step in and make sure that your sins were forgiven. And so if you just happen to not make it back from the Middle East, uh, the, the Pope promised that you wouldn't burn in hell because you'd gone over and, um, and, and, and slain some infidels. It's another one of those uh, cases of the law of unintended consequences. Because what the Pope did is he, he, he turned loose Western Europe, Europe's military to go to the Middle East and commit murder at will. Which they then did. The siege of Accra comes to mind. The Crusaders, led by Richard I, Richard the Lionheart, laid siege to Accra, and once they had, uh, once 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 the, the 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 city had fallen, Richard the Lionheart, having already been absolved by the Pope at Rome, ordered that all the captives. be slaughtered and they were Muslims Jews Christians if they were captives the most pious and puissant king of England Richard had them killed and there was an imagery that went all of the, went with all of this. When you took the cross, you had you you had a, a you, you were allowed. It was like joining a club, a, a murderous club, and you were allowed to wear a big cross on your tunic, and it it showed that you know you were you, you had carte blanche to commit bloody murder. In the name of Jesus. And so in the Middle East, that Crusader cross, uh, there, there's, there's a couple of different ones. There's, there's the Templar cross. Uh, there's the um, uh, Cruz de Santiago. But without exception, they are, they are symbols that to this day are despised in the Muslim world. Loathed. Because of the memory with which they are freighted. And the memories are long there, longer than we have. 
And so back during back, back when George W. Bush was uh, having the innocent people of Iraq slaughtered, you had some military going over there, lo and behold, with the cross of St. James sewn on their uniforms. And now, now, here in the earliest days of 2020, you've got Donald Trump Jr. How I wish I was kidding. Showing himself off on social media, holding um, an AR-15 assault rifle. The magazine on it is decorated with a caricature of Hillary Clinton with her hands on bars peering through them. On the receiver for the magazine, however, is the Crusader Cross. Tells you where he is. Well, I mean, we know where he's not. He's not in the military. He, 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 seems to, he seems to get off on, on, on posing all butch like that. But Trumps don't serve their country. The country serves Trumps. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the screw-up with uh, the video. What I'm going to do... Um, what, what, what I'm going to do is try to restart and see if we can't get the uh, get the rest of the get a, get an hour in with the actually stable video. But the reason I've gone into this long digression about the Crusader Cross. Is because here in the wane in, in 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 the last year of the second decade of the twenty first century, like so much iconography from that era and others, the Crusader Cross is no longer associated with any formal Christian sects. It is now almost entirely the province of uh, the, 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 the fascist, neo-Nazi, white supremacist right. Uh, lots of white supremacist groups use that Crusader Cross, and it is not an accident. There's no way if you if you simply look it up, it will it will come back that the white supremacist, white nationalist, whatever we care to call them, groups uh, have adopted this image, among others. Uh, the co-director of the Conflict, Violence, and Terrorism Research Center at the University of London, Akhil N. Awan, confirmed that the Crusader Cross was picked up and adopted by right-wing, proto-fascist, neo-Nazi, whatever, groups in the wake of the slaughter perpetrated by Anders Breivik in Norway. Which, in turn, at the top of the first hour of the program, brings us to another, another story. And by the way, um, I, you know, you know, you know how much I despise talking about this. But we've got to keep up with fundraising, and we're at $330.00. This evening, 
That's the goal this evening. Uh, and then, well, if we can raise that, then we've just got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to deal with. But we're at 330 bucks. Over at Vice, I I saw a deeply disturbing story. It comes out of, uh, well, no, no, back up, back up. What was it? A week or so ago, we talked about the fact that the it, although it took him a month to do it, big old uh, big old West Virginia Governor Jim Justice finally waddled over to his desk and declared that the class of prison West Virginia prison guard detainees who had been photographed in their uh, their their class portrait giving the stiff-armed Nazi salute would not, in fact, be prison guards, that they would be fired. I haven't seen any follow-up to tell us if they've formally been fired or not. Uh, moreover, I haven't, uh, I still haven't seen any news explaining why the hell those Nazis' faces were blurred out in the photo. I mean, at least with the assholes who fly the Confederate flag, you know, it's kind of convenient because then you know who you're dealing with. And yeah, if 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 you if you fly that flag, I'm going to make a certain judgment call about you. Um. Well, again, those were prison guards. And this goes back to something that I've been saying for rather a long time. It, namely, that the, the that this country's Nazi problem, and we can't, it, at least we're at a point now where we can't say, oh, what Nazi problem? We now know we have one, thanks to Charlottesville, and thanks to that little, uh, that, that, that little shit eater who shot up Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. We have a Nazi problem. The next question becomes one of, gee, I wonder how big our Nazi problem is. And that's where the trouble arises because you've still got a whole lot of people out there. Well, I mean, you know, you might have one here and there. Ign completely ignoring the evidence, going back, for instance, to the, uh, you, you, you remember when the, when, the, um, when the guy in Dallas started shooting cops and it turned out one of the cops that he murdered had, his hands covered and probably his neck and down his back. I mean, you know how these people are with, um, you know, white supremacist symbols and imagery. So there was that. And we found them here and we found them there. And the story in West Virginia about the prison guard trainees. Well, this is the story of Travis Fry. And Travis Fry, at one point, was a senior employee at a jail in Indianapolis. And then he went to work for a for-profit and, and this is just disgusting, a for-profit immigrant detention center. In other words, because capitalism, we have for-profit concentration camps. No, really. You know, with shareholders and shit like that. Uh, Travis Fry is 31 years old, employed as a captain 
at the Nevada Southern Detention Center run by the massive for-profit prison industrial complex corporation Core Civic, and Core Civic in turn contracts with ICE. So we've got the dots connected, right? Well, guess what? Travis Fry, um, back in 2013, signed on with a white supremacist website, joined up, as it were, called Iron March. Remember, these assholes are completely obsessed with all things, with German imagery and iron this and iron that. And Iron March is no more. But back in November, their archive was leaked. And people got a to get a look at what was going on inside there. And there were groups like Adam Waffen, neo-Nazi groups, violent groups that had a presence on Iron March. Um, The neo-Nazi white nationalist uh, pissant uh, Matthew Heimbach says that he was radicalized by his participation in Iron March. Well, uh, young Travis Fry signed up there and used as his screen name Inhoke Signo Winkase. You can still see that Latin motto on a pack of Pall Mall cigarettes, of all places. But it has significance because that was the vision that Constantine said he had on the eve before the Battle of the Mulvian Bridge. Mulvian Bridge. Uh, In this sign, you will conquer. And he saw a cross in the sky. We have medication for things like that now. Inhook Signo Winkase was also the title of the American Nazi Party's manifesto. And by the way, Mr. Fry, the neo-Nazi, had, of course, been a member of the United States Marine Corps between 2006 and 2008. And, and they're, they're, they're all tough and stuff. And uh, Mr. Fry wrote back in 2016, Any man who gets that upset about virulent racism couldn't knock out a tooth even if I tied my hands behind my back. Deep down, no one really gives a shit about racism. This is just empty signaling from this. And we don't know who he was referring to. Um, th- th- that word that used to mean stick and is now a word used for hate against Okay, guys. Of course, that language is um, de rigueur in places like the core. Uh, the Fry was somewhat pro- prolific. He said, dark, dark shit goes on in the corridors of power, and these rats need to be purged from their nests. Well, when when it came to light, when it all came to light that uh, uh, a, a senior official in a for-profit concentration camp contracted out to ICE was this kind of guy, uh, a, a spokesperson for ICE ran to the nearest microphone and said, Harumph, 
U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement holds those working within our facilities to the highest standards of professional conduct. The incident in question does not involve a federal employee. <laughs> So that's their out. Well, he wasn't he wasn't on the federal payroll. He was just on the payroll of a for profit prison corporation that we contracted to run a concentration camp for us. He's not a federal employee. Uh, we have uh, at ICE. We have high high standards. Very high standards. Not so much. At that point in time, Core Civic, the vast corporation. Uh, that runs concentration camps so that they can make money for their shareholders. God, those shareholders must feel so good. They, can you imagine just opening, you know, the, the opening your laptop or your, your your phone or whatever, and and you know, clicking your little stocks app to see if uh, to see if you've gained a point in your concentration camp stock. Jesus, sickening. Ain't it? Yeah, it is. Um, but as Vice notes, this is this is not an unknown problem. It's just been a largely ignored one. All the way back in the nineties, prison guards. were being photographed in mock Klan attire. That happened in at least six states. And then, of course, there's the story, uh, Vice mentioned it as well as me, coming out of West Virginia about the class of little Nazi prison guards. Uh, the uh, for the for the Nevadans among us or in surrounding states, y'all might know where it is. Uh, the uh, the for profit concentration camp where Fry worked is at Parump, sixty two miles west of Las Vegas. They've got a contract both with ICE and the U.S. Marshals. On any given day, they've got one hundred and eighty nine people warehoused inside. And at that particular facility, um, federal inmates with violent crimes are housed alongside immigrants who have been captured by ICE. Are you disgusted yet? By June of 2017, Vice reports... Uh, Mr. Fry had started trying to figure out how to join the Traditionalist Workers Party. That was Matthew Heimbach, previously mentioned. That was his organization before it folded. Back in 2017, Fry said, I'm interested in helping build the Indiana, Indiana Traditional Workers Party. If our buddy Dave in Talabandiana is listening, he's going, well, of course. Indiana. Perump. I think. I don't know. He went on to say, I'm trying to find all the National Socialist guys in Indiana to get together for a meet and greet. Really? A Nazi meet and greet? Will, 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 there, be, will be, there be friendly goose-stepping competitions? Jesus Christ. And so, just as denouement to all of this, uh, since maybe it caused the stock, I don't know, maybe the stock dropped a thousandth of a point or something, um, all of a sudden, Core Civic decided that they needed to uh, get, uh, get a statement out, and they announced that Travis Fry has been placed on administrative leave pending an, inve an investigation. Now, this guy is not a federal employee. He's not a civil servant. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, it, maybe he's a union member because Nevada does have some unions. Is that it? Because really, when you get caught being a Nazi, it's no administrative leave. No, that that's that's you know that's um, gobbledygook speak for paid vacation. He's drawing his pay while he's hanging out and not going to work. He is being paid to be a Nazi, not at work. And Core Civic can't even it can't even no no sorry we can't have any Nazis in our ranks goodbye. Apparently, not. Jesus. Uh, Flavio took issue with me saying that Snopes leans right. Uh, he says it receives funding from George Soros's open democracy. Well, you know, that's fine. But I've seen too many occasions where they bend over backwards to try to um, appease the right wing and Republicans. I didn't say they were right wing. I said they lean that way. And they do. Um, going back to uh, the, the the issue of the assassination of Soleimani, Darlene points out, well, Susan Rice was interviewed on Rachel Maddow's show, and after talking about the utter stupidity of what Trump did, she said we should expect that we will be in a war with Iran. Yeah, because... Uh, and that goes back to my remarks about Elizabeth Warren saying we're being taken to the edge of. And maybe it's a distinction without a difference. But then again, we've kind of been in a cold war with Iran for 40 years, haven't we? All those sanctions, they really haven't done much, have they? Except make ordinary Iranians' lives more miserable. It doesn't really hurt the leadership. General Soleimani certainly had all the money he needed to go swanning around the Middle East. They're a little embarrassed in Beirut right now because he'd been meeting there the day before we assassinated him. As to uh, the clip from uh, Geezer Disgustus, I like to obey the law. Stephen New York says, since when? Well, I think the appropriate answer to that is since never. And as far as uh, Don Jr. is concerned, he and his crusader cross gun. Darlene says, I caught a headline that Don Jr. and Ivanka are the top presidential contenders for the Republican Party in 2024. Talk about the elevation of mediocrity. So this country's a meritocracy. Ha, 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 maggots. All I can hear in my head is something you said many moons ago. He was too stupid to indict and she was too pretty. I, I never, you know, ignorantia juris non excusat used to be kind of a rule, but apparently not if your last name is Trump. And as for, you know, as for, as for Ivanka's, uh, thousand ships launching face. I guess people really do think she's beautiful, but I I saw I, I think it was the picture of her at the U at the UN. Um, with that all too tight blouse on. Um, the one that the, the, the you you know the photo. Uh, any southern grandmother would be aghast, to, or mama for that matter, to know that her granddaughter or daughter was seen in public uh, in such way. It, it, you know, gentility and all that, you understand. But the th in, in one of those photos, I realized she bears a strong resemblance to her grandmother, 
uh, Mary. Mary, the wife of Fred. And all you got to look up, do is look up Donald Trump's mother. And you will see, well, you'll, you'll probably uh, shriek and grimace. Because that's one scary looking old lady. But even she at one point said, my God, what kind of monster did we create? So you get the idea. That maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's why Princess I wank him a daddy. Trump Kushner. Maybe that's why uh, she's had all the work done. I don't know, and maybe that's just too catty to even broadcast. Uh, Ron in Raleigh. Uh, with a note. Uh, hey, Bob, I was wondering if you saw Tom Tillis's invitation to the maggotry at large to sign a birthday card for Eric Trump. Can you say lick spittle? Ass kisser? Suck up? These people have no shame. And not much in the brains department either. Uh, this just in, David in South Carolina, Stan, sent this along. The U.S. military confirms an ongoing rocket attack on Al-Assad Air Base, where U.S. troops are based. It's the one Trump said Iraq would have to pay for if the U.S. leaves. Yeah, he's going to give him a bill. Well, maybe somebody will finally Trump, uh, maybe somebody will, fi will finally stiff Donald Trump for a change. Wouldn't that be novel? At least six rockets so far tonight on Al Assad Air Base. Yeah, this is going to work out great. Uh, what's that, Brother Deacon? Re Ivanka bears resemblance to Mary McLeod. That explains why Trump went uh, wanted to nail her. He always had a thing for his own. Yeah, it's kind of Freudian. A little Oedipus. They thought about na they probably thought about naming him Oedipus, but then they realized he'd never be able to spell it. <laughs> yeah, no such luck. Stephen New York says, "I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, this day would be only as crazy as yesterday." Mm -mm -mm -mm. There's a rule in at work here. No matter how crazy yesterday was, today will be crazier still. And no matter how crazy today was, tomorrow's going to be crazier than that. Only I think in the original formulation I used the word weird. And so far it's, it, it, it's holding up pretty good. Yeah, Darlene in Connecticut says, no, Ivanka is not pretty at all. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see pretty through all that viciousness, isn't it? Uh, what's that, Randy and PA? Uh, didn't Alex Jones get so manly that perhaps he lost custody of his kids? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, that and the whole business about the shirts taking off shirts and oh, yeah, yeah. yuck! I don't even like thinking about it. Yeah, and by the way, this you know just just because the program's a little bit shorter doesn't mean that we can't in, in, engage in conversation. After all, this is conversation radio. If you would like to participate in the program, if you've got something you'd like to say, or um, a, 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 a bird to get out from under your saddle, or a bee from out from under your bonnet, by all means, jump into the conversation. Uh, you can reach me on Skype at. Bob Kincaid Horn, B O B K I N C A I D H O R N, or 304 574 8178. Or if you need us to pay the freight, well, that's why there's a toll free number 844 843 4676. 844 843 4676. That's 844 The Horn. Isn't that clever?
So if it, it, if, if you do, uh, if you want to bring a story uh, that we haven't mentioned to the forefront, or if you uh, simply want to discuss something a little more deeply, well, you're 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 welcome to jump into the conversation. Huh. Somebody tried to call the toll free line, but I was looking in the other direction. My apologies. Uh, let's see here. Oh, doggone it. Bluetooth's supposed to be on. Just a minute. Stand by. There we go. All better now. Um... Let's see. Uh, let's see who we've got. Hey, welcome to the program. Hey, Bob. Hey, what's up? Just me. That's Greg calling North Dakota. Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, long time. Been a while. Called it before. Been a while. Been a while. It has indeed. How are you? Yeah, I kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cold. I had to ask, didn't I? <laughs> it's uh, like, uh, I think it's three above today. Like yesterday, it was like almost 30. Oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't even, I can't even because uh, I'm, I'm feeling very, I'm feeling very much spoiled these days. It wasn't a cloud in the sky here today, and we got up to about 55 degrees. Yeah, I've been listening to you talk about the weather down there, and I'm going, wow. <laughs> yeah, and, well, I mean, it's it's kind of weird even for here because it's not it's not supposed to be this warm. But I got, really? I, yeah, I got to admit, it's kind of nice. It'll 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 chill down a little more as we get toward February, but then March will get here and it'll be spring. Well, actually, it's uh, it's really been a mild winter so far up there. It's only about. Oh gosh, I don't know, eight inches maybe at the most. That just stays and, on the uh, ground. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, it's all changed so much. You must know through the years. I mean, when, when uh, I don't think we got snow till. Well, we had some early, and then it melted, and then. Well, I just, I, 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 I do, I do remember watching uh, back when the. When the Standing Rock protest was taking place, I remember it, it looked like a winter that that was pretty brutal. Yeah, but like when I was a kid growing up, you know, it, just, it seems like every October it would snow. Our Halloween would snow, and nowadays sometimes we wait till December. You know, that's yeah. Well, it, it's it, it's so, it's it's at least a little bit of a relief on the heat bill, but. Uh, over the, uh, over the, over the, over the long term, it's going to, it's going to have horrible consequences. Yeah. And then I heard you talking about your heating before too. And it, it sounds like you have propane, huh? Yeah. Well, up, uh, uh, we use some, ele- up at, up at, uh, up at home, we use some electric and some propane. Yeah. I got and, and, ca- and, ca- and kerosene oh, and kerosene. Oh, okay. Kerosene too. Yeah. I got natural gas here, and I really like it. Oh, it's it, it it's it's nice. We it. just uh, we just we just don't have a, a a central furnace, so we we area heat. Oh yeah, that's what. Yeah, okay, and then uh, but um, so far it's been really it hasn't been so far. My bill's been under two hundred since the end of. Let me see, October, November, and I'm getting December. Just got that today. I haven't looked at it. Yeah, yet. we just uh, we just we just got the uh, December electric bill, and uh, we try we try not to use. We try we try to reduce our usage, but still, um, even so, um, two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, I uh, I uh, keep my I've kept my thermostat down. Today was the first time I I. I lifted it up to 
two degrees and about since about I don't know before uh, maybe the end of October, and I've been able to I don't know what it is why but maybe I was working on the railroad for thirty years but I'm able to handle I, I don't need my house eighty degrees you know. <laughs> oh, I can't abide that. It's actually it's under seventies even you know. No, I, I, I can't. I can't handle it. Uh, let me see. Uh, right now it's at sixty-four, and I'm quite comfortable. Yeah, that no, that I'd be fine with that. Uh, I yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, here where I am, I, I I keep the thermostat down on sixty-two, but it just the natural the natural heat of the day usually keeps it around sixty-eight, seventy. You know, you, 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 uh, mentioned, you mentioned you mentioned the railroad there, and it reminded me of the origin the origin story of the of the that uh, iconic American cold weather hat, the Stormy Cromer. Oh, yeah, because Stormy Cromer was a uh, he had he'd played uh, minor league ball, but then his uh, intended father said, "Well, uh, I'm not letting her marry you if you're going to keep playing ball." So he got a he got a decent job on the railroad, and his hat in the winter, you know, he'd stick his he'd stick his head out the out the window there. He was an engineer, and he'd lose his hat. Yeah. And so he asked his oh, wife. Yeah. He he asked his wife, and, and you know, when you're in northern Michigan, which is where this was going on, that's no place to lose a hat in the yeah. dead of winter. Um. I'll bet. Uh, so he asked his wife Ida if she would sew a hat for him that wouldn't blow away. And she invented, she took the basic idea of a ball cap and she added these flaps. And they're not like fold down flaps like on an, uh, on an Elmer Fudd hat. It's a band that goes all the way around the hat and the whole thing just pulls down and covers your ears. And, oh, okay. and, and, and there's not, it is, it is the absolute best thing in the world um, in brutally wow. cold weather. And they're made. They're made. They're made in America, up in Michigan. Uh, I've got one for cooler weather, and I've got one for freezing weather. And I think they quit making the the warm weather hat. But oh, they're fantastic. I'm not familiar with the called Stormy. What? Cromer. Uh, you can you can Cromer? look up. Yeah, you can look them up online. Stormy. S T O R M Y K R O M E R. StormyCromer dot com. This is a free un oh, unpaid unpaid work. product placement. Your if you're wearing one of these, your head cannot get cold in winter. Especially that they got one that's like yeah. it's wool and it's lined with thin slate, can't get cold. Oh wow! And uh, my friends, yeah. my friends up in yeah. northern Wisconsin turned me on to them, and man, I tell you, it, it, better better than any watch cap or anything like that. I'll check it out just out of curiosity, but and and they're they're, they're warranted for life. Uh, you register them when when you get a new one. You register it online, and even if you lose it, they'll replace it oh, for wow. they'll, they'll they'll replace it for uh, not full price. And again, they're made in the United States, and they're 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 they're, they're wool. Uh, the women's the women's uh, 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 Agnes has one and just adores it. It's got a little it's got a little cutout flower petal on the side, and she's just uh, I've gotten one for all my daughters. And and they're just adorable. I have to check it out. You know, so that's pretty good warranty, good old American ingenuity and and stuff. There, like Trump's going to bring back to us, huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, comedy yeah. on Titanic Tuesday, sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? What I really called you, I wanted to ask you about, was last week. You were talking about Iran and uh, the Christians and the Jews and how we're going to go over there, you know, the end times. And you said, I can't remember how you put it. And that's, I, 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 was, I went back on some archives and I was trying to find it. I, can't, I couldn't get it. And anyway, I was just wondering if you, what you said, you said about how, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how, 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 how
how you put it, how the Jews are going to be, uh, uh, well, the Christians are going to, are going to yeah, that, that's... screw them too, because in the end they got to, they got to go too, right? Yeah, yeah, that, no, that's, that's exactly what evangelical millennialist or premillennialist crap teaches. It's, it, you can't really find it in the Bible. It was it was sort of invented in the seventh in the eighteenth and nineteenth centuries. But the way it works is this: um, if 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 things get shitty enough, then Jesus comes back down out of the clouds, and he comes back with a really uh -huh. bad attitude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And 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 he yeah. he he comes back mad. And what and what he's mad about? What he's mad about is that the last time he was here, um, the Jewish people didn't acknowledge that he was the Messiah. So they're going to get one last chance. Yeah. They're going to get one last chance when he comes back. Now I'm not saying this is real. This is actually just this is just monumental Mount Everest sized bullshit. Uh, he's going to come back yeah. down out of the clouds in his holy rolls. And he and 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 he's gonna and he's gonna gather up all the Jews, and he's gonna take the good yeah. evangelical Christians, and he's gonna give them all swords, and he's gonna say, "Hey, over there, y'all gotta um, y'all gotta acknowledge me as the Messiah." And any of them that doesn't that, that that don't do that, he tells he tells the Christians, "Go ahead and gig them like frogs." <laughs> yeah. And there, and, and and I mean, you you laugh, you laugh, and it's wacky. But the fact of the matter is, that is really, really, I'm not kidding. What they believe, I was raised oh, yeah, in this yeah. stuff. Huh. And and and, yeah. and the idea is, well, it's not like I mean, they got to see him come down out of the clouds. I mean, you'd think they could acknowledge him then, couldn't they? I mean, they got it coming if they don't. Yeah. had to get the uh, for sure from you because the way you said that last week and I was laughing about it and I, I don't know I told you about that I, I sent you a letter one time and I told you about my my mega thumper troll on Facebook who's told who told me that me and you are fucked <laughs> yeah well I mean that that <laughs> I, I've had so many of them tell me that it just it they're going. It's, they're going. To, they're going to have to get more creative. Uh, but the, but the fact of the matter is, what people what and and you know the multimillionaires in the for profit media are particularly um, bereft on this because they do not understand how dangerous these evangelicals are. And and kind of like not and kind of like the Nazi problem we have in this country, they don't understand how broad and how deep it runs. Yeah. Exactly. And it, and it, it it is terrifying in its potential consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and, mean, and, and, know, and, yeah. and and when you've got well, for instance, just as a for instance, there's an organization out there called Queefy. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. It's called Queefy. Uh, uh, Citizens United for Israel. And it was founded oh, okay. by an evangelical jackass named uh, John Hagee, who owns a vast ranch yeah. outside San Antonio. Uh, this is, this is the guy. And, yeah, and, 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 yeah, okay. and he's so, and he is, he is, he is so uh, grossly morbid. He, he's become so grossly morbidly obese uh, in, 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 in his service of his own um, gluttony that he can barely get around yeah. anymore. But this is the guy who would stand on stage at his church, his mega church, and yell, if a man will not eat, let him starve. <laughs> okay. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and he is the founder of Queefy, Citizens United okay. for Israel. And, yeah. Que and, and, and Hagee has argued in the past that, uh, that, that, that the reason the state of Israel was created was to make it easier to kill all the Jews when Jesus comes back and they don't acknowledge him as the Messiah. Now, I find it, I find it utterly repugnant to even be talking about something like this. 
but it is it it it, it it's it's an American reality. This is who and how they are. And so, lo and behold, oh, yeah. there uh, just the other day, I saw a photograph of Mike Pompeo. You know, he graduated first in his class at West Point. <laughs> Golly, that just kills me every time I say it. Uh, uh, you say that all the time. I like that. <laughs> and, 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 and he's standing on stage, and guess what's behind him? A big, a big screen that says Queefy. Queefy, Queefy, Citizens United for Israel, Queefy. So he's part of this bizarre death cult yeah. of evangelical millennialism. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 it is, if you really, if you really know, if you, if you really understand these people for who they are, it's terrifying because they would like to use they think they can use American foreign policy to somehow work the requisite magic spell to drag Jesus back oh, down out of the clouds. It's, in, it's insane, yeah. but it is also at the same time very, very real. Oh, well, yeah, they, they, they really believe that, and, they, and you know, and everything's it's their way or the highway with anybody. Just like my mega trumper on Facebook, I mean, he's telling me all the time how it is, and I'm like laugh. I just make fun of him, and I've quoted you a couple times, and and Mike Malloy, and he, if me, you, and Mike were all condemned. <laughs> uh, you know, you know I, I, my, there, my my answer my answer to. Yeah, my answer to that is always, hey, are Oral Roberts and Jerry Falwell in heaven? Well, yeah. yeah. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be anywhere they are. Because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, one, because, yeah. because if there's some sort of an afterlife, a, a paradise afterlife that thinks Jerry Falwell needs to be there, mm -mm, no. Yeah. Of course, the reality is, is yeah, if the reality is exactly. in, in in the teachings of Christianity, if uh, if there really is an afterlife, if there really is a, um, uh, uh, if the, if there really is a heaven and a hell, then odds are that uh, Jerry Falwell's roasting on a spit and being basted uh, basted hourly by some little demon with a bucket with a bucket of melted butter. Yeah, with that pig face, it's entirely appropriate. Ain't, ain't that ain't that the damn truth? Well, yeah, and him and Newt Gingrich when he goes too, he can, they both could be side by side. Precisely. Anyway, uh, another thing is I wanted to ask you was about when you went to Netroots Radio. Did you did you find a barn to go? Did you go to a place? Did you have a gathering? A which? Did I have a Netroots what? Netroots Radio. Well, I went to Netroots Nation. The gathering, weren't you going to have a... Oh, oh, no, we, well, no, we, we didn't, we didn't really have enough people to, 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 uh, to do that in Philly. Um, we had a few friends and we just, oh, okay. uh, we just, we just went out and hung out a little bit. So I'm hoping, you know, come, come, come June, we're going to have the horn in there in, uh, in, in, in West Virginia and have a, have a high old time. Oh God, I really would like to get down there to that. I'm going to try. What well, what would be the best way for me to come from? Well, I'd have to go through Minneapolis. Uh, it would basically, it would probably go Minneapolis to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to here, or not here, but Atlanta to West Virginia, Charleston. We're uh, we're out in West Virginia, I guess. What airport? Uh, Charleston. Oh, Char oh okay. Well, I'm going to try. I I don't know if I'll make it, but I sure would like to get there and make it if I can. Well, I think it'll, I think it'll, I think it'll be a blast and I'm going to try to work up the, uh, um, uh, work up the plans for it so that we're doing the crowdfunding campaign for it around about, uh, oh, you know, March or so. Yeah. I wanted to make Mike the mountain thing too. And I couldn't make that. I mean, I'm just living on, uh, uh, disability or it's not a lot. So I know anyway, I'm, I'm saving for, your thing this summer, and I hope I can make it. 
I mean, everyone's welcome, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try anyway. So go to Charlotte and then, what, rent the car or something? No, Charleston, not Charlotte. Charleston. Yeah. Oh, Char Charleston, West Virginia. Yeah, and then just, yeah, it's an hour's drive. Oh, okay. No problem, then. If I could make it to Charleston. And, 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 and we'll... Uh, yeah. um, we will, uh, you know, we'll have all the accommodations taken care of and food and some entertainment and carrying on and things like that. So I, I hope it works out according and to you, plan. Do you have directions to your place? Uh, well, we'll, we'll be doing it. Uh, we'll be doing it over in Fayetteville. We're not going to, we're not going to do it at the fabulous Kincaid mansion. Oh, so oh, everybody, okay. everybody will have their separate hotel room and, and, and then we'll go, go somewhere for like the big barbecue picnic and that kind of stuff. Um, well, uh, doesn't Fayetteville have, a, have an airport? No, no. Well, I mean, we do, uh, and the only thing that flies in or out of it is a 1943 Boeing Stearman uh, biplane tra <laughs> World War II trainer that they do to give tourism rides. <laughs> okay. <laughs> little tiny airport like we have, in other words. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's one little asphalt strip. It's not even, I don't think it's even officially an airport. It's just a guy who flies tourism oh, wow. trips That's over the gorge. Left, yeah. No, but but you know there are people there are people people who enjoy the heck out of it. He'll take you up in that open cockpit uh, Boeing Stearman and get you right over oh, top. Shit. Yeah, and get you right over the New River Gorge and drop it in and drop it into oh, a no. hammerhead stall and, and and just go spinning right into the gorge and then and start it up and fly and, and fly back. Wow, well, maybe they'll let me try it. I have like twenty two hours of private. <laughs> I didn't finish. Bring, bring. I bet I could still fly it though. Yeah, bring your own Boeing. Uh, hey, it's been great talking to you, my friend. You take care. Okay, Bob. All right. Later. Yeah. Bye. Bye now. Ah, from the far frozen fields of North Dakota. And let's see. Let's uh, let's run over to the Skype line and see who we've got. Hey, welcome to the program. Hello. I know I've got the right line. All right. And maybe the button's not quite. Okay. Are you there? Hello. I hear the air sound. <sighs> I hope this is not technical difficulties. Hello? Oh, there's Scott. I'm sorry. It works better if you take it off of mute. Uh, it, it, manifestly so, yes. Jeez. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Uh, Are well, we having fun, Bob? Plenty of rockets coming my way. <laughs> yes, I know. I just saw it on the GNU's. I, uh, I know. It, it's some. It, it's, it's like the, It's it's like it's like the, it's like this about fifteen minutes before airtime every day. You're, I'm just sitting here with my little head and my little hands going. Fuck. What? <laughs> well, well, this is how bad. How? Ask me, Bob. How bad is it? How bad is it, Scott? It is so bad that not only yours truly, but the great uh, Bob Kincaid are often at a total loss for words. When asked for a comment, one of us said, And the other one said, Sold American. That's right. I, uh, I, know, my, I know my old bits. Well, the, <laughs> you know, now, that's probably for, not going to play real one, well. There went dinner in the, there went dinner in the uh, mountain time zone. My apologies. Yeah. For one thousand dollars, Mr. Kincaid, can you mention the name of the actual auctioneer who opened your hit parade and a number of other lucky stories? No, I'm I, I am I am hell I am helpless in that regard. I, I forget his given first name, but his nickname was Speed, and his last name was Riggs, and he got something like three thousand dollars a show just for that seven-second bit. Can you imagine? 
Good work if you can get it. Radio certainly paid in those days, you know? Yeah. It's like that, that old joke about the, the big intricate machine and nobody on staff could fix it when it broke down and they called in a specialist and he came in he, for $10,000 was his fee. He came in, opened the access door, looked in with his flashlight, took a wrench, made a one quarter turn clockwise on a particular screw put the wrench in his pocket, shut the door, and put his hand out for his check. And the guy who owned the machine said, that's an awful lot of money, $10,000, for less than a minute's work, turning one screw one quarter inch. And the guy said, well, you have to know which screw, you know? That's the truth. So which screw are we getting today, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is that Chinese proverb, ancient... Uh, oh, you mean Chinese? may you live in interesting times? God knows we're there. Well, that's... We're a, there. No, it's not a proverb. That's a, Scott, that's not a proverb. That's a curse. Oh, shit. Well, I'm, that's why it's not that's, that's, I, I, I put that I put that up on my, on my Twitter feed a few nights ago. That, that, old, that, that old Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times, is getting cursier and cursier. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I, 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 I just... You know, because now we're now we're back to that thing where you wake up every morning and you and you go, hey, nothing's glowing yet. OK, so far, so good. What I want to know is. Where how does it how does it end? I can play it either way. You know, I don't know. I it's a mystery. A, I can do it. It's a Romeo scenario. and Ethel, the pirate's daughter. You know, I can do a scenario where step by step the guy go that goes batshit crazy because he's he's gotten what he wants he's got his trial uh the witnesses appropriate to the case are cold uh and and just it it just makes him crazier than ever you know and then somebody steps in and says well it's time for you to go because you know uh we want to start with a with a supposedly clean slate with uh, with Pence, and and uh, and I predict Pence will pick Pump. Where'd you go, Scott? Well, that was interesting. Dog got it. Some days the magic works, some days it doesn't. Um, okay, we'll try this again. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, I, I think it was on my end. I got a message on the screen that's a poor connection, but I don't... Well, that's, that's it. it's like I've had a hard time staying connected to the Facebook video feed this evening. I keep getting a message telling me, that I've got a poor wireless connection, but I've got a hard wire, and the wireless is turned off. Well, see, that's that's just crazy. That's poor designing on somebody's part. Where did I drop off? I was starting up a roll, Bob. I did. did, did you, you 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 go back, and I'll tell you if we've gotten if we've been there already. Well, just the just the fact that the, the the Trump gets what he wants. He gets his trial. Witnesses appropriate to the case are called. And oh, uh, but, that, but but that's the other thing. Chin, uh, you know, Moscow Mitch, chinless Mitch, uh, has declared that he's gonna he's got the votes in the Senate to hold the trial, even if he ain't got no bill of impeachment to have a trial of. You tell me how that works because you know, I'm, I'm kind of flummoxed. You're, 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 gonna, you're gonna have a trial, but you're not gonna have a charging document. That's like having a felony criminal trial without an indictment. How can well, you, the, yeah, that's the latest I heard is they want to start without the uh, articles of impeachment. Well, where does it say in the Constitution uh, th that that's an OK thing to do? It, do it doesn't, does it? No, it doesn't. And in Unless, fact, it, it, I mean, it, we, I could pull up the language, but no, it's 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 modeled on a grand jury proceeding. Yeah. OK. And a grand jury issues an indictment, and the indictment is then transferred to the trial court, and the trial court 
presents the defendant with the indictment, and that joins the issue, so to speak. And then you can go forward and have an inquiry into the facts and the law and find out if someone is guilty or not guilty. I mean, it's, 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 it's very basic, but and that, that, that's how it works. So you can't really have something that you would call a trial of impeachment in the Senate if the impeachment has not reached the Senate. Yeah, and because that's, that's the starting ingredient to, to launch the next step into viability. Well, what, okay, so it, you... I'm gonna haul Isn't out. It? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna haul out the uh, old magic eight ball with the cracked screen that says "Answer Hazy, Ask Me Again Later." Oh, that's the first time this year, Bob. Uh, this is the first time in the new decade. It. it shut up. Don't <laughs> do that. Don't start that shit. It makes me crazy. <laughs> Want to go out and eat run, eat dirt and run rabbits every time I hear okay. somebody talking about our new decade. <laughs> Because we all start calling, we all start counting zero, one, two, (laughs) nine. Uh, Go go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, No. So what's going to what's going to come next is that, uh, because what's what's really driving what's really driving the maggots crazy is the fact that the, (laughs) and we've discussed this, uh, the house sees possibly more impeachments coming on, Uh, so. You know, Trump's got to be. It's got to be something historic. So he he might become the first president to be impeached twice or three times or uh, once every other week. Yeah, because you and so and so what Mitch McConnell will try to do, I'm guessing, uh because if you can hold an impeachment trial without actually having the bill of impeachment in front of you, then you can probably hold a trial of any impeachment they might ever want to do. And you can just say, hey, Donald Trump is not guilty forever, no matter what he did. He's got blanket impeachment immunity because Moscow Mitch McConnell says so. Yeah. Yeah. And Marco Rubio and Joni Hogdy Baller, Ernst and Corey Gardner and Martha McSally and... Uh, and, and, and you know the, the 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 rest of the the rest of the maggot chorus will say we are the chorus and we agree we agree we agree we agree, and nine and cows know, will come out dancing and and there will be skinny cows and fat cows and middle of the road cows and they'll they'll they'll, 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 they'll oh Jesus it'll be something it, it'll be pub- it'll be positively biblical. All cows all the time, <laughs> cow FM. No, it it. <laughs> It's Your really, friend through the day and the night. It's Cow FM. And don't forget, listen for the sound that means your chance. Mm. When you hear that mm-hmm. sound. When you hear, mm-hmm. call in with the count and the amount. Yeah, yeah the ninth caller. Well, God help me. I just, and the trouble is you get these references. See, Yo, so that makes Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. The guy and the guy, the guy who's directing the play, he'd get it too because he is serious old. Uh, he's serious radio. Yeah. What in the hell is going on out here? Wait a minute, Bob. I think one of the squirrels is forming a mutiny. I've only been out there twice not, with you. Uh, I tell you what, if squirrel mutiny is not a is not a bluegrass band name by uh, say this time tomorrow, there's no justice in the world. Squirrel well, mutiny. Ma- <laughs> Maybe it's not quite a mutiny. Coming up on the a, Opry, we got music from Squirrel Mutiny. He's got a little knife, knife clenched in his little squirrely teeth. All right, I'm when I got to go out here one more time. I'm gonna put just a couple of more nuts. If things get any worse, I'll be out here with him, digging them up and burying them. And well, stuff. Appara- hey. apparently, apparently, what I said, what I said uh, about uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, resonated a little bit with Steve in New York. I don't think he thinks this is crazy. Subject line, preemptive acquittal. Yeehaw, talk about owning the libs. Yeah. Well, somebody earlier today, when I was, uh, not much earlier today, was making the point that's been made before. And you got to remember that not only presidents, but judges and others can be impeached, federal judges. There has never been an impeachment of any anyone over the history of the country that has not included relevant witnesses. So how is Trump all of a sudden 
some kind of uh, privilege. Well, character. I mean, you know, he, he's the Quisatz Derperock. The what? The Quisatz Derperock. I think I got he's one the, of those for Christmas. He's the cho- he's year, the chosen I, one. He's special, baby. It took up too much space. And by the way, David in, David in South Carolina, Stan, uh, um, with a note, unconfirmed rockets simultaneously hitting multiple targets in Iraq. This is this is an ancient uh, middle uh, middle. Uh, this is an ancient Middle Eastern military tactic called showing them the fucking door. Yeah. And see, here's another problem. They're aimed at housing for the military at the bases. And you remember back when God, when Reagan was president? Ah, you mean the uh, the 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 uh, barracks in Beirut. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, when what, what, when when old when old Ronald Wilson Reagan, old six 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 himself, was told by all of his generals and all the people with the stars on their little costumes, uh, they, they, they said, uh, uh, that "Mr. President, uh, our Marines are completely safe on the uh, on, uh, on the ships that they're on, and we can get them anywhere we need them to get in less time than we could get them if they were in the ba- barracks in Beirut. Uh, leave them on the ships, Mr. President." And old 666 himself, Ronald Wilson Reagan, said, uh, "No, uh, Nancy, uh, we've we've got to we've got to show the flag." And the next t- next thing you know, we're showing two hundred and some odd flags of two hundred and some odd dead Marines because he there insisted on putting them in the barracks there. there Evil go. fucker. So here we go again with uh, you know the housing issue, the barracks issue. Something explosive coming into close proximity to the barracks issue, and it's like same shit, different day. It, it's, uh, the it's independent, remote. the independent in uh, the UK reporting that Iran has claimed responsibility for a barrage of missiles that struck a joint U.S. Iraqi airbase on Tuesday. That would be today. State TV said Tehran's Revolutionary Guard had fired tens of warheads at Al Assad base in revenge for the death of Qasem Soleimani. So. You'll notice that they're they're attacking a, a military target instead of attacking like innocent civilians. You don't realize how much you love your Yeah, country. and and you got to wonder. I know in, 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 on the American side and maybe some other countries besides, they uh, write messages on the on the bombs. That's that's apparently a, a sick tradition. One wonders if the. Uh, Iranian. Well, you know, we do it too, and I've seen, uh, I've seen pictures of the Israelis doing it. I mean, after all, when uh, when we went to Afghanistan, uh, we sent we sent soldiers to Afghanistan carrying uh, military uh, military weapons that had Bible verses on them. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Jesus. Well, I've got uh, before I I go, and I want to go, and you know, in a moment or two. Because I got, up. yeah, I got two too. Well, I've got, I got a, a viewing tip. Yes. Tonight, uh, Dave Chappelle is the honoree at the Mark Twain uh, uh, Humor Prize on PBS tonight. Uh, I think it airs in all uh, markets that have PBS. I forget whether it's eight or nine. I think it's nine p.m. And Dave Chappelle is quite a talented fellow and uh, deserves deserves the accolade. They've had a number of really fine uh, comics over the years since this prize has been instituted. Um, oh, and speaking of Mark Twain, I watched over the weekend the uh, on uh, Amazon Prime the documentary about Hal Holbrook. Yeah. Called Holbrook Twain or Twain Holbrook. Oh, I, I'd like to. I, I need to watch that. It was quite good. It was. I watched it twice because you only have like forty-eight hours once you've started watching, and I watched it twice. And the man uh, did. I forget how many thousand appearances as Mark Twain. Uh, supposedly the longest one-person uh, offering on stage in American history. And it's relevant for today because Twain is relevant for today. There are some of his writings that if you changed up some of the verbiage in terms of words that aren't used quite the same way anymore. Like fan tods. 
or uh, uh, save Congress. There's no native criminal class in America, save Congress. Well, that we would use the word accept Congress. Yes. You know, but it's 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 quite good. And uh, watch it on uh, Amazon Prime. It's like five bucks. And uh, tonight, the Mark Twain uh, festivities on PBS will put you in good stead and maybe take our minds a little bit off the madness because it is madness and it's maddening and it pisses me the I mean, it royally pisses me off that that we have come to this when it could have so easily been totally avoided. Now, that isn't to say that, you know, they, you got to be careful what you what you ask for. What did I think it was Truman Capote had a book called Answered Prayers that never did get finished in his lifetime with the premise that there's more tragedy and sadness and heartbreak resulting from prayers that are answered than from prayers that aren't. But what I'm saying is, had the election gone a whole different way, and I'm not going to re-litigate that, all of this could have been so easily avoided. I mean, you can't tell me that we couldn't have scrounged up 77,400 and some odd voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin four years ago. I mean, because if it's gotten that bad, if we're that much off our game, then what do I always say? We're all screwed, Bob. Ain't that the truth? So there you go, and God bless. And well, at, at least um, keep your as of side Thursday, up. There, uh, uh, there's a coalition of um, progressive groups that are trying to get people out into the streets, uh, win without war, move on, indivisible, vets about face, National Iranian American Council. Um, there are at least 50 events that have already been planned around the country. Uh, no war with Iran. Well, we had a, we had a, uh, and I, if I'd known about it yesterday, I would have gone. I don't know how many turned up, but it doesn't, it didn't look like it was more than maybe a couple of hundred here in San Diego, uh, downtown. Somewhere. I'll tell you something, I'll tell you something weird that happened. Um, Oh, stand by. Sneeze. Yes! Y'all really didn't want to hear that. Some of you did see it. Um, but no, I'll, no, I'll have to re the tape. Ferg, Ferg, got an, Ferg got an email telling him to double-check his draft registration. Are you shitting me? No. Jesus. Agnes was telling me about it the other night. I'm like... Now, why the hell would anybody send him that? Well, yeah. Was it official or was yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, I asked Agnes to print it out and, and scan it and send it to me. But, yeah, that's a little creepy. And and you've got a, you've got a lot of young Americans going, hey, is there going to be a draft now? And, of course, if you really want to stop a war with Iran, the, 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 the way to do it is to have. I mean, you know, that's 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 why the that's that you know, that's why the Vietnam protests got to the level that they did, because all of a sudden people didn't want to go. And not everybody was Donald Trump and had a daddy who could bribe a doctor uh, to say that he had fucking bone, imaginary bone spurs. And, you know, Bob, you know, I, I was at two of the biggest anti-Vietnam war marches that there were in October and November, respectively, in 1969 in Washington, D.C. And one of them, I think it was like a half million or approaching a half million, and the other one, it was approaching a million. And those were only only two events in those months. There were other events in towns large and small around the country and perhaps even around the world. The moratorium uh, uh, movement is what it was. And the yes, the draft w was a big part of it, but another big part of it was the fact that then as now we were lied into the proceedings. Sure. In, in terms of in August of 64, the Gulf of Tonkin nonsense. And there's always the fucking lie. Oh no! When you when you when you want a war, there, 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 
you lie your way into it. Hey, Scott, I got to get out of here, man. All right, I uh, I don't I don't blame you. <laughs> well, I just got to I just got to go do what I got to do. Well, there's nothing much edifying with you know talking about the madness. Sometimes you've got to take a a, a respite, and I'm glad that you. I'm sorry for the circumstances that took you down south, but I'm glad that you were able to find a, 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 another thing to do while there. That, uh, is, that is well, outlet. it's. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, my uh, my buddy passed away back in 2017, so we put together this, you know, for now, knowing that you know that that, that we could at least do this as a memorial to him. And it is it's 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 wonderful to be doing it again. Um, well, what I mean is, even though those circumstances are not the happiest, the very fact that something creative and something that's going to edify. Oh, oh yeah. I members, mean, I'm 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 thrilled. Uh, I'm I mean this. It's 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 a, it's a, you know the 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 theater is a special place. And, you know, I, I look at community theater as quite possibly the realest form of theater there is. No, there aren't mi multimillionaire backers who are in Broadway and all that bullshit. It's theater the way theater started out with people who, you know, were amateurs who wanted to tell a story. And this is a hell of a story to be telling, especially since it centers on that, that, that era that has so much in common with our current one, even though we mm -hmm. didn't want it to and didn't expect it to. Because, of course, Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus of France would lead the crusade. Uh, I think it was the third crusade. Was it the third one? Largely, uh, lar largely successful, but in the end proved to be disastrous both to Richard and, 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 and to... Uh, and, and to Western so-called Christendom, but I got to get out of here. It's always good talking to you, my friend. And All right, Bob. Uh, we'll check it. Hopefully maybe we'll talk a little bit more later in the week. Okay, man. Take care later. Bye now. See ya. And so we come to the end of the program for the evening. Thank you very much for joining in and sharing your precious finite time, engaging in the program in whatever manner you so choose. Uh, we will close the program with 330 bucks to raise. It'll be five thirty tomorrow. Um, and hopefully maybe somebody on the overnight crew will help knock that down some. Um, thanks to all of you who keep the program on the air in whatever uh, manner you do, uh, uh, Patreon or PayPal, subscribers or a la carte, because uh, it's, it, well, it's inspiring to know that you find non-corporate, non-capitalist uh, conversation worthy of your support. Thank you. And thanks to our all-volunteer staff. Thanks to Sparky and Steve in the chat room. Thank you to our news ninjas. Thank you, Brother Deacon Asa, head on dot live. Thank you, John Fox in Burning Australia. Thank you, Ben Birch, WhiteRoseSociety.org. Thanks to the hardest working, bravest people I know, the men and women of Coal River Mountain Watch, CRMW.net. 20 years at the forefront of the struggle for human rights and environmental justice in Appalachia. And always, always, always. Gina, it's all for you. Later, y'all. <laughs>